Namaskar. Welcome to the session on tourism and ecology linkage. A close observation of tourism and ecology indicates a linkage between them. This can be understood through a close study of the global environmental changes taking place due to several factors like the pollutions of various kinds. This includes pollutions like the air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, etc. Through this episode, let us try to understand the inherent linkage between ecology and tourism. The main objective of learning has been presented under the five major fields of study. First, the global environmental change. Second, air pollution and its impacts. Third, water pollution. Fourth, noise pollution and the controlling devices. Fifth, municipal solid waste and recycling. Firstly, coming to the introduction. Tourism planning has been advocated as a tool for controlling the negative impacts of tourism development to protect the resources upon which the tourism industry is dependent. In many third world countries, the tourism planners or policy makers do not consider seriously the deterioration of environmental quality in tourism destination. Biodiversity or beauty of land and life are highly replaced by uniformity and ugliness. The modern world is characterized by mass concentrations of people, mass production, mass activities, human settlements are turned into concrete jungles and fertile lands are destroyed. Modern mass tourism has become an environmental menace. First now coming to the global environmental change. Tourism involves two components, the tourists and the environment. The basic needs of tourists are accommodation, transport facilities and service infrastructure. These activities and the behavior of tourists exert pressure on the environment. The interaction between tourism and environment should be viewed as an important consideration for conservation and protection of the delicate balance of the nature. Studies reveal the adverse consequences of tourism related activities on the environment. Recent publications indicate the strong influence of the environment on the society and vice versa. Based on this, the following analytical distinctions are important in the human dimensions of global environmental change that is GEC. Proactive that is prevention rather than retroactive responses are needed. Prevention is better than cure. The postponement will only aggravate the problems. Also, we have to distinguish between cause and effect, tangible and intangible, short and long term, intentional and non-intentional besides direct and indirect effects. Three human perspectives on nature are as follows. Domination. Dominion becomes domination. Nature is controlled and exploited in order to satisfy the needs and wants of humans. Stewardship. Human dominion over nature is conditioned and moderated by stewardship. Humans are the stewards, not the owners of nature. Romanticism or deep ecology. An intrinsic value is attached to all forms of life and especially with wild nature unmodified by humans. Nature may be worshipped, which is pantheism. It is not seen as something that should be exploited for human ends. A reduction in the size of the human population is required for non-human life to flourish. Relationship of ecology and tourism. Tourism's basic resources, land, water and energy, has meant that the tourism industry and government agencies are opposed over land and water rights by local people. Lack of access by locals to public benches, violation by hotels of environmental regulations have all been cited in legal disputes throughout the world. 
Another serious concern is tourism leakages. Often, most of the money spent by the tourist gets leaked away from the destination areas. Uncontrolled tourism activities adversely affect the natural as well as cultural resources. This apart, there are geographical, social, economic, ecological or environmental and psychological aspects of tourism. Among these, the ecological or environmental dimensions of tourism is the most important. It is also a vital link for the survival of the tourist industry itself. Uncontrollable mass tourism will cause irreversible damages. For instance, let me quote the cases of Uti and Kodai, Dal Lake, Kovalam, Goa and Taj Mahal. To recall the Asian proverb, tourism is like a fire. You can cook your soup in it and you can also burn down your own house with it. In spite of the technological and information revolution, we are trapped in a circle of self-destruction by adopting the typical boom and bust tourism paths. Air pollution and its effects the composition of atmosphere has undergone a tremendous change during the last 100 to 200 years. To understand the problem of air pollution, we must investigate the following factors. The sources of pollutants, the reasons behind emission and their trends in future. About 60% of carbon dioxide emission is due to burning of coal. Transport vehicles went out black smoke from their exhaust due to adulterated fuel. They also emit lead. Besides agriculture, mining and industries etc. also cause pollution of air. Chemical plants are a large source of industrial emission of toxic air pollutants responsible for about 35% of the total emission. Other major sources of pollutions are paper, plastic, rubber, automobile industry. Industrialization and air pollution. Air pollution in India has been aggravated over the years. This is due to rapid development activities based on expanding industrialization. Growing cities, increasing traffic, rapid economic development and industrialization and the resultant higher levels of energy consumption led to the release of more pollutants. The air pollutants cause severe damages to not only humans but also the flora and fauna around the entire surroundings. Respiratory diseases, irritants and swelling. Evidences show that air pollutants are linked with respiratory and other diseases in human beings. Sulfur dioxide causes irritation to nose and mucus lining, shortness of breath, tissue fluid accumulation, swelling that is edema and bronchospasm. These are the acute effects. Long run exposure may result in respiratory diseases like chronic bronchitis, aggravated asthma, emphysema, pulmonary fibrosis and increased stress on heart. Trucks and two wheelers causes eye and lung irritation. This is due to oxides of nitrogen. Inhalation in large amounts may give rise to gum inflammation, internal bleeding, pneumonia and cancer. Deleterious Effects of Lead Concentration World Health Organization recommends that lead concentrations in air should be lesser than 10 units. It is estimated that 18 million children in developing countries are affected by air lead emissions and poisoning. It can cause permanent brain damage, reduction in normal IQ, Increased lead absorption increases the deficiency of iron, calcium and zinc. It can aggravate or cause anemic, colic or abdominal pain, neurological problems, hypertension and heart diseases, kidney damage, multi-system damage and behavioral disturbances. Carbon monoxide is one of the most poisonous gases. 
visibility and pollution. Dust, smoke and other suspended particle matter reduces visibility. Fly ash also affects visibility. Sulfuric acid mist, ammonium sulphate mist and water vapors influence the vertical temperature profile in the atmosphere which affects thermal mixing, dispersal and the buildup of pollutants. Air is also polluted due to smoking. Lung cancer, various respiratory and cardiac problems are linked with smoking. Non-smokers have as much risk if they live around a smoker. This is called passive smoking. For example, the indoor air pollution load in Gujarat villages is estimated to be equivalent to smoking 10 to 15 packets of cigarettes per day. Effects of the ecosystem The effects of pollutants on ecosystem become visible after a long period of exposure. In highly industrialized countries, the vegetation has been exposed to pollutants for several years. Consequently, the devastating effects on terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem have long been observed. Those are mainly due to wet acids like sulfuric and nitric acid dissolved in water or dry that is gases affecting directly vegetation and soil, deposition of acid in combination with other air pollutants such as oxygen, hydrogen fluoride and particulates. The third world countries like India are beginning to realize similar impacts due to rapid rates of urbanization in the recent past. In this, air polluted areas with sulfur dioxide, aluminium metal can form aluminium sulfate and limestone and marble can form calcium sulfate called gypsum. Such reactions have caused damage to buildings, sculptures and other historical monuments made up of stone, plaster, marble or metal painted glassworks. The uncontrolled mass tourism has initiated many chain reactions, trampling by greater than 20,000 tourists per day, scratching of walls for graffiti, open sewers, a proliferation of cattle sheds, pigsties, dirty yamuna, noise and solid waste pollution. As a result, no tourist wants to stay in Agra a minute longer than necessary to see the monument. Air pollution is directly or indirectly linked to the emerging global environmental problems such as global warming, acid rain and ozone depletion. Now next coming to water pollution. Water is one of the most basic needs for the survival of all living organisms. Water is used for agricultural, domestic community, commercial, industrial and recreational purposes. The sources of water pollution include point and non-point sources like discharges from industries and storm water respectively. While pollution from point sources can be controlled, it is difficult to control pollution from non-point sources such as agriculture runoff, leaching from waste disposal sites and storm water. The common sources of water pollution are domestic sewage, industrial effluents, agricultural runoff, air pollution that is acid rain, bilge water from ships or boats, passenger trains, oil pollution that is leakage or accidents or war etc. Industrial sector and water pollution. Water pollution in the industrial sector is concentrated within a few subsectors mainly in the form of toxic waste and organic pollutants contributed by the processing of industrial chemicals. In terms of the total organic pollution, nearly 40 percent arises from the flood industries followed by industrial chemicals and the pulp and paper industry. Other major sectors of concern is that of small scale industries. With more than 2 million units where population abatement has been neglected so far, 
States with over a lakh registered small scale industries include Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and Bengal. Of these, very few of them opted for CETPs that is common effluent treatment plants to control water pollution. But most of these CETPs either do not function at all or do not treat effluents to the desired quality. Fertilizers and Water Pollution Presently, the institutional mechanisms to address pollution in the agriculture sector are also missing. For this sector is out of the ambit of the pollution control boards. The problem is acute in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Excessive use of fertilizers has led to an increase in the levels of nitrates in the shallow groundwater sources. It is estimated that in India, about 70% of our available surface water is polluted. World Health Organization WHO, estimates that 80% of the illness in our country could be prevented if safe potable water is made available to all. World Resources Institute in 1990 estimates that about 30 to 60 percent of the poorest urban population globally has no direct access to safe drinking water. Now next coming to controlling water pollution. Adopting the following strategies, water pollution can be controlled. Prevention at source rather than end of the pipeline technologies that is pollution control at source rather than pollution treatment, recycling the recyclable pollutants, for example, biogas from domestic sewage, refuse derived fuel from municipal solid waste, etc. Fiscal policy changes, that is pollution taxes, subsidies, etc. Adoption of appropriate pollution control technologies, Common Effluent Treatment Plants that is CFTP for small scale industries. Degradation in the quality of water sources. Pressures due to inadequate collection and inefficient treatment of domestic wastewater discharge of highly complex waste from industries and the polluted from agricultural fields have resulted in considerable degradation in the quality of water sources. Indicators of this deterioration include depletion of oxygen, excessive presence of pathogens or indicator species, setting of suspended material during lean flow conditions, oil, grease or any other visible particles and bad odour. Now next coming to noise pollution and controlling devices. Noise pollution is leading to adverse health effects on individuals or environment. Noise pollution can result from either natural or anthropogenic processes. The natural processes are volcanic activity, earthquakes, thunder, wind or storm, sea waves. The anthropogenic causes include industries, domestic sector and traffic and community activities. Noise can be measured using sound level meter. There are two basic characteristics of sound that is intensity or loudness and frequency. Effects of noise pollution on human health. Auditory effects such as conductive deafness, perceptive hearing loss, noise induced temporary threshold shifts, noise induced permanent threshold shifts, noise trauma or acoustic trauma. Non-auditory effects include interference with speech, decrease in work efficiency and physiological disorders. The physiological effects include effects on nervous system, headache, effect on stomach, heart attack, effect on fetus. Noise pollution can be controlled and the impacts minimized by adopting the following strategies. Use of silencers, use of acoustic tiles, 
ear plugs and ear muffs, job rotation, trees as sound energy absorbers. Next coming to municipal solid waste and recycling. Environmental education and control through environmental legislation. The growth in MSW that is municipal solid waste generation in India has outpaced the growth in population in the recent years. The recyclable content of waste ranges from 13% to 20%. The reason for the escalating trend is a mix of the changing lifestyles, food habits and changes in standard of living. Also, increasing urbanization and changing lifestyles has led to the solid waste generated in Indian cities. It has increased from 6 million tons in 1947 to 47.8 million tons in 1997. The production and consumption of plastic increased over 70 times between 1960 and 1995. The collection of municipal solid waste is inefficient. More than 25% of the total is not collected at all. Its transport is inadequate and its disposal is unscientific. Recycling plastics saves twice as much energy as burning them in an incinerator. 85 to 95 percent energy savings can be obtained if recycled, yet it is not cost effective. In India, also use of plastic bags and satchels are discouraged. Awareness towards this is slowly spreading. Except plastics, considerable potential exists for recycling of solid waste, for example, biogas generation, refuse derived fuel, briquettes recycled paper and glass etc. Disposal of solid waste is a major issue of concern in India. Respective municipalities collect municipal solid waste in cities and transport it to the designated disposal sites, which is normally a low-lying area on the outskirts of the city. The Ministry of Environment and Forest, MOEF, Government of India, has issued the Municipal Solid Waste Management and Handling Rules in the year 2000, which identified the CPCB, that is the Central Pollution Control Board, as the agency to monitor the implementation of these rules. Benefits of Preventing Pollution It is always better to prevent the pollution at sources rather than treating the pollutants. The latter option is called End of the Pipeline Strategy. It is obviously costly and time consuming. A recent evaluation of industry case studies at global level shows that the benefits for companies that reduce waste and prevent pollution can include lower costs of raw materials, lower energy costs, lower waste disposal costs and reduced dependency on waste treatment and disposal facilities. Reduced or no future liability for cleanup of or contamination by buried waste, fewer and lesser regulatory complications, lower operational and maintenance costs, lower employees, public and environmental risks and expenses, both present and future, reduced liability insurance costs, better employee morale, higher productivity and product quality. To conclude that we have discussed at length several components such as global environmental change, air pollution and its impacts, water pollution, noise pollution and municipal solid waste and recycling. Thank you.